Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the compressor overload protector and its use in order to help keep the compressor safe in a high amperage situation. So say the compressor is trying to start up and it's not able to, to start, what's happening is it's drawing high amperage and the compressor protector opens up the electrical circuit so that the electrical windings inside the compressor do not burn out. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Danfoss, and you can access their free training programs through the link in the description section below. There's two main types of external compressor overload protectors, and this one right here is typically found on fractional horsepower reciprocating compressors such as this one right here, and you have your, your round ones as well. So they could be open such as this, or they could have a plastic cap on them such as that. But basically they're typically found on the top of rotary compressors but depending on their mounts, they could also be mounted on a reciprocating compressor. Now I'm gonna take you in for a closer look at each of these two types. On this type of compressor protector, there's flanges. So it makes you have to put this on first, and so this goes on the common terminal, but you wanna make sure that you know which terminal is the common terminal before putting that on, because some orientations are different. But then after that, the current starting relay can get put on or the PTC thermistor can be put on. And so you know, I am gonna go ahead and start this up. And on this PTC thermistor, there is the, uh, the PTC thermistor inside. So on this one right here, I've removed the disc inside. And what's gonna happen is it's not going to be able to start up because it's not gonna get any power to the start winding. So we're gonna see how this works. And what happens is, if you have a high amperage, you have this little electric resistance coil on the inside of here. So let's see if you can see that. That little electric resistance coil, you have power going through that and then across this little brass piece over here to get to the other side in order to even get to the common terminal for the compressor. So on the inside here, there's a little disc on this one that you can see. And that's sitting right on top of the little electric resistance heater. And when you have high amperage, it heats that up and it pops the thermo disc. So what happens is it pops this little, this little uh, terminal right here up and it no longer connects. So it opens up the electrical circuit. So that's how it works. And when you check your electrical resistance across the two, you're going to read, it's not going to read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance because you're reading across that little electric resistance heater. So we have our multimeter on resistance, and I'm gonna check right from here to here, and we're gonna see what our resistance value is. This reads 0.5 ohms of resistance, so you might read 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now we're gonna do our test on this compressor. We're going to apply power to it, but only to the run winding, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna read our amperage with our multimeter, and then we're gonna see our compressor protector open up. This is gonna get very hot as well. We have a 120 volt power cord right here and it's all hooked up, but there is no power to it yet. And this high voltage 120 volt line is going into the run winding and we've removed the disc from this PTC thermistor shell. So we're not gonna be applying any power to the start winding. So this compressor is not gonna be able to turn on. And over here we have our compressor protector. So we have our common wire attached to that. We're set on amperage on our multimeter. So we're gonna read that. We also have a bead type temp sensor taped onto the top and we made sure that we're not touching any electrical components there. And we're gonna be reading the temperature on the top. So this is just the outside of the compressor overload protector. Let's go ahead and turn the power on. So you see that we're drawing right around seven amps right there. Our temperature is increasing. And remember that's on the outside, not on the inside. So it shouldn't take a whole, whole long time, but you see our amperage is right around 6.6 .6 amps right now, right around 200 degrees on the outside of this is when that tripped, but it's much hotter on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this component off, I'm gonna be careful because you can see how hot it is, and I'm gonna read the resistance value across the, the two terminals so that you can see that it's gonna read OL right now. So this is very hot right now, and I'm going to check my resistance value across it, and you see that we read, oh well. So now it closed. If the compressor protector 
reads oh well when it's cool, then that means that this is bad and you would need another one. So this is going to stop that compressor from actually starting up. For the round type of compressor protector, you typically have them underneath of the rotary compressor cap and there's a spring on them. And there's a shelf on the inside of here and what it'll do is it'll press in onto the compressor to make sure that this is nice and tight right on there. So on the inside of these, you're still gonna have a small little uh, wire that's gonna heat up when you draw too much amperage and it's not gonna have a high resistance value across the terminals in the inside, such as the other one, but it may be 0.1 ohm of resistance. But what's gonna happen is due to the, the heat of the compressor here and the heat on this wire, the little bimetal disc right here is going to, to click. So this is a little thermo disc and it's just going to open up the electrical circuit. When it cools back down, it's going to then close and these two terminals are going to touch on the inside terminals in here. So it works very similar to the other one, uh, but it does get its heat absorption from here as well. If you're looking for the multimeter used in this video, I have a link down in the description section below, as well as a link to our refrigerant charging book. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.